All right, I think I've got to go in here. I had a hard shut down my phone. Happy Sunday. I was having some technical difficulties. I hope you're having a great day so far. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Ventura, California. I had um, the opportunity to go to yoga, my favorite routine that I have missed so much, and it's been way too long since I've um, gone to yoga. So I am super thankful that I got myself there today because as always, when I leave the class, I am so thankful that I went and then I, my body today was saying, Claudia, why the heck have you not come to yoga in so, so, so long? My joints felt it, um, my, my mood felt it, my, my thoughts felt it, my heart felt it. Um, and so I wanted to share with you a little bit about um, what the teacher was um, focusing on in our practice today in yoga. So I thought it would make, it very much reminded me of something very important and powerful for any human out there. And uh, so as you're hopping on here, definitely say hello. Tell me where you're watching from. Miguel, thanks for joining. Daniel, thank you. Lena, happy Sunday. Amy, how are you? Sean, thanks for joining. Chanel, George, thanks for hopping on. So today um, at yoga practice, you know, the, the teacher always sets the intention of the practice and just is very open to sharing something of a thought that is that she's coming across. And I love when uh, yoga teachers bring in, you know, the the thoughts of, of yoga. It's not just about the physical practice, it's about the mental practice. And one of the things she said that she was going through was a change in title. And what that made her think about was, um, who am I? And she talked about how it's very common for us as humans to center ourselves around titles, the titles that we have. So what are some of your titles? Because I know some of my titles are wife, mother, principal, um, coach, um, business leader. So those are some of the titles that you can attach yourself to. And as we all know, our titles shift a lot in our lives. You know, I wasn't always a wife, wasn't always a mother, wasn't always a principal, wasn't always a leader in business. And so our titles are always shifting. And she talked about how, because she's had a major shift in a title in her life, how that's kind of thrown her a little bit off on her centeredness um, and made her really reflect about who she is. And so as we were all laying there, we were thinking about ourselves and who are we you know how do we define ourselves how do we define ourselves and, and are we centering ourselves around the wrong things and so it actually really reminded me um, of the seven habits of highly effective people one of my favorite books you guys if you haven't read it and you have some time for reading my favorite um, this book I really find myself coming back to this book over and over and over again and today was the perfect example of coming back to this book because when she talked about how it's important not to attach your identity and your self-worth and, and focusing on who you are based on a role that you have in your life um, and why it's important not to do that, it reminded me of um, a part of this book where it talked about the same thing and it talked about um, what's really important for all of us is to identify who we are and identify our center. Our center is what grounds us and the principles and the values that we um, walk through life with. And obviously, we're all humans, we're all learning as we go. So, you know, what you might value or center yourself around, that can also change. But it talks about how there's a lot of times some of the common um, places that people misidentify their center. Um, number one, they might you might um, feel like your spouse centered. You really define yourself as a spouse, as what you're doing for your spouse, as the wife or as the husband, and really center yourself around your and your security around um, you know your role as a spouse. Or um, you might be family centered, which it doesn't sound like a bad thing, right? It doesn't sound bad to say you know my number one role is being a mother. 
But the thing is, is you can't center yourself around being a mother and, and, and define yourself as a mother because, you know, that's where sometimes once your children leave your house, you feel lost and you don't know who you are anymore because you're not, I mean, you're still a mother, but you don't have all the purposes around, you know, caring for your children anymore once they're adults. And so people can go through a really big ex feeling of loss. And that's because they've really defined themselves um, and they at the center they've put themselves as a family, as a mother or a father. Another center that we can often do is put our work at our center. Hey Mike, thanks for hopping on. Aaron, thanks for joining. So, so and this is I think a, a very much the case for many people is we define ourselves by the title of our job. Um, you know, uh, I am you know, I'm an educator, you know, or I'm a, you know, a business owner, and you really define yourself that way. And let's say for a person who's really defined themselves around a role that they've led, maybe they were a um, police officer, you know, for 30 years, and all of a sudden they they, they no longer a police officer, um, and how that can devastate a person because they've really defined themselves um, and centered themselves around their role as a title. Um, you can be friend centered. This is um, can be especially true for young adults who really center their identity around their circle of friends, who they're friends with, how many friends they have, and they really define their value and their center around friendships. Um, which again, these are all you know. Work is important. Family is important. Being a spouse is important. Having friends is important. These are all things that sound like they're important, but it it talks about how. You really want to not put them at the center. Um, you want to put principles at the center. So that's what he talks about in the book about instead of, um, so here's the circle he drew. And a lot of times people put like the family at the center or even finances at the center or work at the center or possessions at the center. Um, instead of having principles at the center, knowing that all of these things will change throughout your life. And while a person who really knows who they are um, is always focusing on putting principles at the center, um, principles that are not changeable, right? Things that are will t uh, stand the test of time. Um, so principles like kindness, you know, defining yourself as a kind person, right? That that doesn't matter um, what your job is or, you know, if you're married or if you have children or if you have friends, you know, it's about how you define yourself as a kind person. Or maybe honesty, right? You, you put the principle of honesty at the center or the principle of um, uh, hard work, right? That's where different than saying that you define yourself by your title, but you define yourself by the principle of being a hard worker, you know, and, and that will be, that's something that won't change, you know, that you will be committed to um, working hard no matter what it is. So I was just thinking about that because, um, you know, I think especially true for, you know, people that feel like, you know, the whole midlife crisis thing, <laughs> I'm gonna talk about that because I'm in my 40s, right? And the, a lot of times a midlife crisis is because something has changed and someone that was putting something else at the center now they feel lost and they don't know what to do because they've forever defined themselves as a mom or they've forever defined themselves as a certain job um, and now something's changed and now they're in crisis mode because they don't feel like they have a role or a purpose and so that's what that is all about and today um, on the mat when she talked about think about who you are without incorporating the titles that come along with who you are. Um, the title of friend, the title of neighbor, the title of father, the title of um, business owner, the title of um, you know whatever career you're in. Um, think about what are the principles that define you and always keep those at the center. Um, and that is one of the parts of the um, beginning with the end in mind, it's in that section because um, you have to know who you are um, and you have to know what your core values are and to define, you know, to really know how you show up in the world. 
And at the end of that chapter, he talks about writing a personal mission statement. Um, on the video I did yesterday, I talked about family vision statements, family vision and family um, mission statements. Um, personal mission statements begin with identifying who you are as a person and how you want to show up in the world. And if you've never stopped to think about who you are without the titles and what are your core values and principles and you've never written down a mission statement and you've never really found clarity around that, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter where you are in your life, it's always a great um, practice to do that and today at yoga class it really made me think you know really made me think deeply about that like if I take away all the roles you know what is it that I define myself by if it's not defining myself as a mother if it's not defining myself as a principal if it's not defining myself as a wife if it's not defining myself as a business owner you know what are my core principles and how do I want to show up in the world each and every day so just some thoughts I wanted to share with you on Sunday. You know, Sunday definitely went, this is all about, you know, a little bit of soul searching on Sunday, a little bit of digging deeper. Um, I think the digger you, the, the deeper you dig, um, the better you know yourself and the better you can go out and show up in the world um, in all those roles that you have um, with confidence and knowing that your center is based on principles it's not based on how many friends you have, if you're married or not married, if you're dating or not dating, if you have children or not, if you have a title at your job or not, if you are a business owner or not, right? It's about your core values and principles and who you are. Um, so happy Sunday, everybody. I hope you're having a great day. Um, we started an eight week challenge. Um, and you know when I say challenge, you know, it's really an accountability group We started an eight-week accountability group for our not only our physical health But it, it, it's all about your emotional health too and your cognitive health and everything about you as a healthy human being We started an eight-week accountability group because I don't know about you But sometimes I feel that it's easier to be accountable to another person Than it is to be accountable to myself um, because I feel bad when I let people down for example, that's why people have like workout buddies, right? Um, and again, this might not be something for you. You might have no problem being accountable to yourself each and every single day. Um, but sometimes it's like, I will, um, if I know someone else is counting on me, I will um, keep myself accountable. So we started the eight week accountability group on health and wellness. Um, we are also, you know, one of the th goals is is to get healthier and to get more fit. For some people, that means losing weight. For some people, that means getting stronger. For some people, that means just feeling better, performing better, functioning better. Um, our health is way beyond what we look like, right, in the mirror. Our health is defined on so many levels, and it is including how we think and how we process and how we feel, not just how we look. So if you're interested in that eight-week accountability group um, and you would like to join us in that it's going to be a hundred percent supportive environment of people just um, sharing um, a journey of accountability with each other to really get focused um, on our personal selves who are we how do we show up better in the world how do we stay healthy how do we make sure again habit number seven sharpen the saw um, you always want to make sure I, I feel like that should be habit number one um, instead of the last habit I think it should be the first habit and that is taking care of you um, that is your number one asset so if you're interested in joining that we just started and kicked it off today so that was my you know this morning I was like I I am going to yoga I, I for sure fell off the wagon with going to yoga I was you know trying to do some other things um, and my body missed it tremendously so it in my body told me that today when I did my practice like hello hips <laughs> I need some more flexibility um, so you guys have a fantastic Sunday I wish you all the best um, reach out anytime if you have any questions um, and definitely drop in some of the comments you have about your journey um, and who you are and what you put at the center um, of your life Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.